thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move leave is given to bring in a bill to regulate industrial action by those providing certain critical national services, to define critical national services to include railways, buses, trams, the underground, the NHS, fire and ambulance services, to require those taking industrial action on such services to demonstrate the matter in dispute is such that the adverse effect on the public is proportionate and reasonable, and to provide for the High Court to adjudicate on this and determine a minimum required level of service to the public during strikes and for connected purposes. Madam Deputy Speaker, trade unions have a long history of campaigning for workers' rights stretching back to the 19th century. Trade unions ushered in an era of regulated working hours, holiday pay, sick pay, maternity pay, health and safety at work, and decent wages. I applaud those achievements, fought for by trade unions and made law by past parliaments. I respect what trade unions have achieved in the past 150 years, and I understand the right to strike is inseparable from the struggles that led to these victories which have helped civilise our country. But we must also recognise that strikes have a profound effect on the wider public, especially where those strikes occur on critical national services. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is time to consider again the impact that strikes have on the wider public and to protect the public as well as uphold the right to strike. A few weeks ago, I received a heart-rending message from a constituent, Jenny Lahane. She said that tears were streaming down her face as she wrote about the effect of the recent Southern Railway strikes on her family. She wrote that she had to get her six-year-old son to walk to a bus stop at 5.30 in the morning when the trains were not running so she could get to work and so her son could get to school. She said those responsible should hang their heads in yeah, shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she attached a photo of her son trudging disconsolately down a cold, dark street wrapped in his blanket. That is the human impact of nearly 40 days of strike action that the RMT and ASLEF have taken in the past few months, most recently only yesterday, to say nothing of the unofficial strike action and the work to rule that has been taking place on non-strike days. The operator, Southern Rail, must shoulder a great deal of blame. I am not here to defend them. In fact, I think they should lose the franchise. But there is no question that the strike action has made a bad service unusable in the last six months. And in this case, Madam Deputy Speaker, I do not believe the unions have a substantial complaint. No one is losing their job. No one is getting a pay cut. Every single train currently scheduled to run with two members of staff will continue to be scheduled to run with two members of staff. The dispute centres simply on who opens and closes the doors and whether the train can still run if the conductor does not turn up for work. The rail regulator says there is no safety issue, contrary to the union position. In fact, millions of trains have run, in, have run perfectly safely since 1984. One and a half million trains in the last five years without a single fatality. All of London Underground runs with driver-operated doors perfectly safely, as does most of continental Europe. The RMT is disputing these issues simply in order to retain their ability to shut down the rail network in the course of future strike action by their conductors. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, it is on this flimsy pretext that 400 conductors are preventing 300,000 people from getting to work or getting home to see their loved ones. Sue Gateskill had to quit her job as a sales manager. Lee Fenton, my constituent, was fired from his job working for a local council. Emma Green had to quit her job working as a commercial lawyer. Many people are having to consider moving home. It is just not acceptable that the rights of these people are not being adequately protected. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm afraid to say there are signs that this kind of industrial action, hugely disruptive to the public but based on a flimsy pretext, is spreading. Mersey Rail and Great Northern are apparently next in the Union's sights. And two weeks ago, London ground to a halt due to an RMT strike 
on the underground over changes that were in fact introduced some time ago. I am pleased to say that the Mayor of London, to his great credit, <coughs> Sadiq Khan, condemned without reservation the RMT underground strike. But it is very disappointing that the Leader of the Opposition uh, did not follow the Mayor's example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And far from following the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan's fine example, the Leader of the Opposition said that instead of siding with the public, he would in fact join the picket line. And I indeed, and I must say, the President of the RMT, a man called Sean Hoyle, did not even bother to disguise his motives. He was recently filmed speaking to a group of trade unionists, saying that the strikes had the objective of bringing down the government. Those are his words, not mine. Now, Mr Hoyle is entitled to his political views, but he is not entitled to use the power he has as the president of a major trade union to inflict misery on hundreds of thousands of people simply in furtherance of his nakedly political yeah, yeah. objectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, we now need further legislation to recognise the public's right to get to work, their right to see loved ones, their right to receive medical treatment, as well as respecting the union's right to strike, which I fully accept. We in Parliament should not stand by and allow strike action to cause people to lose their own jobs. This bill goes further than previous legislation and proposes that strikes on critical national services, such as the railways, the tubes, buses and NHS, should be proportionate and reasonable in the view of a High Court judge in order to be lawful. The judge would weigh up the complaint of the striking workers on the one hand against the impact on the, of the, on the wider public on the other in deciding what is reasonable and proportionate. And where strikes were allowed, the judge would specify a level of basic service that would be available during any strike. The law in Canada and in Spain and in Italy already works in a similar way, guaranteeing a basic level of service. Mm. And Madam Deputy Speaker, mm. a poll published in yesterday's Evening Standard found that 55% of Londoners support these proposals. And Madam Deputy Speaker, public support for these proposals is growing daily. Yeah. 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 Many other members support these proposals too. In a very similar vein, uh, the member for Bexhill and Battle, who I see is in his place, is introducing his own 10-minute rule bill on the 4th of February to stipulate that strikes based on the pretext of safety concerns cannot proceed unless the relevant regulator agrees there is a safety yeah, yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. Right. Madam Deputy Speaker, I do not for one moment dispute the right to strike, but the public also has a right to get to work yeah, yeah. and not be forced yeah, yeah, out yeah, of their yeah, own yeah. jobs yeah, by yeah. union yeah, yeah, action. Yeah, 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 yeah. A fair balance is needed between the two, and I'm afraid to say current legislation does not provide it. To support this motion today, if there's a division, uh, you do not need to agree with the precise details of this bill. For example, you may think there are better methods of arbitrating between the rights of the unions and the rights of the public than through a High Court judge. Some people have suggested to me in the last few days Parliament itself might be an alternative. But if you support this motion, you are sending a simple message that the public have rights as well as trade unions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it is Parliament's duty to protect the public as well. Yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill is about balance, this bill is about fairness, and I commend it to the House. Yeah. Yeah.